Hey guys, uh, in this episode we're going to look at what I can do about my multimeter which I've had for about two years now and thought it might be, oh, I, know, I know it was cheap, um, cheaply built, certainly not uh, anything near like a, a fluke for example, um, but it's better, well it has more functions than, than my other old one which was a bloody reliable uh, unit and still functions today. But um, this one does capacitance check and uh, temperature probe and other bits, so um, it's it's a bit nicer. Um, but I went to use it yesterday, and uh, it feels like the ball has let go, and I can move that freely with no resistance, which is rather annoying because it's nice to be able to click in between selections. So we'll pop that open and see if I can't make it right. First part, just peel off the outer skin. Um, doesn't really do a lot uh, other than look good. Next, we've got two screws in the corners. Uh, at the bottom, there's, there's nothing else. There's two screws up here which hold the um, kickstand on and two screws there which hold the battery cover on, but they can stay there. On second thought, the battery can come out just in case something goes wrong. Uh, while I'm po poking around in there, uh, this is supposed to be a uh, Cat 3 rated to uh, a thousand volts. Yeah, um, I don't know a lot about the ratings, um, what what's required to meet certain ratings. Um, I understand that um, blast protection is important. Um, this has a double skin around the edge there that. Uh, um, just to make sure if you go across any high voltage and something detonates inside, it doesn't come out and uh, attack you if you're holding onto it at the same time. Um, very basic construction in there. One one chip does all the work. A um, couple of fuses and, uh, yeah, minimal protection, it looks like. And a few screws later, flip out the main board. There's a couple of clips clips run down the sides, uh, there's the backlight for the LCD uh, panel, and uh, there's an LED that pokes through the center of the PCB, goes down into the center of the selector switch, and uh, and that just shines a small light out the center of the selector switch, so uh, in dark conditions you can see what range you're selecting. So, it sprung out with an almighty force, and if we have a look here we've got uh, some indentations that uh, the ball runs against and down here we have one ball there and another ball there that's uh, just popped out and it looks, yeah there we are, okay what a bitch there's a little post that the spring sits inside of and the side of the post has actually collapsed no always, I mean there's really nothing nothing to it I mean there shouldn't be a lot of uh, force sideways force on that but uh, uh, well, I guess it could be it's fairly thin plastic um, maybe I can get some uh, JB weld or uh, some sort of metal metal putty um, build that up again around the spring and see if it holds on um, bit of a shitter really but uh, never mind Let's have a go. Um, oh, this yellow piece here is actually a, a dumbass uh, device. Um, what it does is when you're selecting uh, through the various ranges there, when you get onto current, it'll swing over and allow you to plug your lead into that so uh, port and then uh, when you get over to the 20 amp range it'll swing over and allow you to plug your lead into that slot so it just stops people leaving the lead in the wrong place when they go to do something and uh, and uh, blowing things up but I might just take that out because that's pissed me off a couple of times <laughs> when you're just in a hurry to want to do something and you can't be bothered bloody pulling leads out even though yeah, I know you have to pull it out anyway to, to plug it in but yeah I don't know bit of a bit of a, a gimmick really and now we'll try and get a bit closer so you can see what's happened there it's just a like a plastic post and the side of it has uh, come away but it's 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 very partially held intact there so what I'll do is I'll use that 
still to um, form the the shape of the hole for the spring to sit in so that it doesn't I don't get that too wrong and I'll just pack perhaps pack a lot of um JB weld is like a, it sets as hard as metal so that should give it a bit of reinforcing all around the side there okay this might not be as straightforward as I thought the um you can see that's quite a recess down in there um, where the ball runs against and uh, there's not a lot of width um, it pretty much encompasses the post entirely so if I go packing that up with something it's um, there's not much room for it to rotate around I might be able to get it in the side so now I've super glued the um, side of the uh, cylinder back on and um, just got to get in there with a little bit of sandpaper and uh, roughen up the surface here because it's um it's very smooth and quite shiny um, and once you rough it up it it'll allow it'll allow the um the next uh, bonding agent to attach firmly and uh, you know, get give it a bit of grip and um, I've also roughed up around the um, inside edge here as well because the uh, selector doesn't go anywhere near that so we'll pack it in around there and the side and uh, and uh, see what see how it goes. One thing I just noticed is the size of the springs. The one on the right is slightly taller, and that that came out of the um, the broken uh, section. And I'm just thinking the uh, depth of the um, of the holes is the same at both ends. So I don't know why they've got a, 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 a longer one than that one, but it would obviously put more force on things, and uh, perhaps that's why it let go. JB Weld is a um, like an epoxy metal really. Uh, it's a two part with a hardener and the metal itself and you mix it together much like any sort of epoxy but set up two part um, um, and when it hardens it's it's as hard as steel. You can you can drill it, tap it, machine it, whatever you want to do. Um, and I always squeeze out more than I need for any given job I don't know why <laughs> but um, it's probably probably better that you have a little bit more and there we have it packed in around this side that uh, broke away one thing interesting to note is that uh, on the bottom one there you might be able to see down the side it's actually got a slit through the length of it um, which would allow the, the allow it to flex somewhat Whereas this one had no room to flex, and uh, I guess might be the reason why it snapped. Um, who knows? But um, yeah, let's let that dry and uh, see how that works. And 24 hours later, we have cured JB Weld. A light grey blob there, now encompassing the well, half of the uh, spring housing. Let's throw it all back together and give it a test run. Okay, and a one, and a two, and a click. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Nothing like a clicky switch.